Even in sunny Texas, it gets chilly from time to time. Your furnace is not gonna quit on you in the middle of summer because you're not using it then. It's always gonna quit on you when it's cold. Our furnace has quit. Turn it on, you can hear the blower start. It starts blowing the cold air, but the furnace isn't igniting. It could be a problem that you've come across. Maybe you're having that issue now. If your RV furnace is acting up, if you can hear the blower start, but it just isn't lighting, I'm gonna show you the most common cause and how to fix it. If you're lucky enough to have an access panel on the outside, this job's gonna take you about five minutes to do. Super simple, super easy. We are not that lucky. What that means, uh, it's just a little bit more time consuming. The task itself is pretty simple. Well, the first thing I gotta do, go into the basement, and we gotta clear out all of this stuff so that we can get behind the access panel to get to the furnace. If you have to go through the trouble of pulling everything out of the basement, this is also a great time to go through all the stuff you're carrying around with you, see if maybe there's something you can get rid of, something you've been carrying around that you don't need anymore, you haven't used. It's a good time to purge. Anybody that's ever been golfing with me would probably tell you that I don't need these because I'm not very good. Whatever. Golf clubs are staying, but I will take this time to go through and see if there's anything we can get rid of. All right, so we got everything out. Basement's nice and clear now. We got clear access in here. We can get to this access panel. You can see here, all this sand that we're still carrying around from our time in Destin. We get the little shop back out. We'll clean that up while we're in here. Don't be afraid to go into your basement. <laughs> all right. First thing we got to do is take out all of the screws that hold up this little access panel. You notice the other thing that I did here is I went ahead and I marked the access panel where it meets the cross members. Easier to line up the existing screw holes into the frame. Make stuff easier on yourself. Not really much to worry about in here. A couple of water lines and sewer lines. Be cautious of anything that's in the area. You don't want to snag a water line and pull that down and then cause yourself a whole other problem. A little bit tight in here. Not the most comfortable job. If you got a mat or something, it would be great. I do not. I should get a yoga mat. Maybe I'll take up yoga. I could use it. It's calming. If you're on the road and you're traveling, keep one of these with you. It's great to have. I don't know how many times I've used this thing. Here you go, this is the underbelly here. See the ductwork for the furnace. Big jumble of wires that we don't want to have to mess with. And then our furnace, right here. Hey baby, I found the other flashlight. It's on top of the water heater. Been looking for our other flashlight. And it's back there. When I had to get the serial number off the furnace, I used that to shine some light back here. I used the selfie stick and my cell phone to come in and take a picture of the serial number that's on top of the furnace so that we could order the right part and uh, close out the air return. And hey, there's the flashlight. It's still going. I left it on too. I give you the do's and the don'ts. That's a don't. Don't leave your flashlight in behind closed up walls. Well, hello. You're gonna wanna make the reinstall as easy as possible. Grab a Sharpie, mark the location of the furnace where it connects to the floor, and then a couple of spots on the wall. I did the same with the vents. A couple of marks on the side of the vents. Numbered those so that we put them back in the right spot. 
Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the power. We don't wanna get electrocuted. Turn off your propane. We'll turn off the power to the RV. And don't forget to disconnect your battery as well. This is a 12 volt system. So unplugging the RV is not going to protect you uh, from the energy from your battery. So make sure you disconnect your battery as well. I'm gonna go light the stove for a second just to purge out the propane and the lines. Disconnect the battery next. I give you the do's and the don'ts. That's a don't. Disconnect the battery next. See the switch right here? Pretty simple. Just gonna go ahead and turn that. This little key comes out. So like I said, I marked all the duct work uh, to make sure that we get each one back in the right position. I've marked the furnace location, marked the side of the furnace where it lines up on the floor. There's a couple of bolts down here on the floor. Use this tester to show you. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all the ductwork from the furnace. We'll just get that out of the way, just so I got a little bit more room to work with. These ducts can be a little bit tricky uh, to get on and off. They slide in and twist. Turn it. Pops out. Just move these back out of the way. All right, now that I got the ductwork off, go ahead and pull out these two screws, one right here and one on the back side over there, you can see. Okay, so I got the floor screws out. I'm just gonna pick up this furnace just slightly, just to get it over this flooring here. Slide it back and try and shift it towards me so that we got access to the blower. Now that we've got this thing opened up, we've got access to the blower. And this thing right here, this is your sail switch. So what the sail switch does is tells the furnace, hey, go ahead and light. We've got enough airflow. Uh, sometimes you can get away with just cleaning these. I went ahead and ordered a new one. It came with a new mounting bracket, which supposedly gives it a little extra clearance so that the sail switch doesn't fail quite as often. This is a very common problem on RVs. So all you gotta do now, pull these two screws out. This whole thing slides out. Two little plugs here on the end of your sail switch. Take those off, attach them to the new sail switch, put the whole thing back in, and then just reinstall this. So the way that these sail switches work, air from the blower passes over top of the switch, closes the circuit, that sends a signal to the furnace to ignite. So sometimes these switches will get clogged up, sometimes they'll just be dirty and you can clean them. Just two little screws that hold this switch onto the mounting bracket, tighten them up nice and snug, and then just simply fit it back in. Two screws to reattach it. Reattach the wires, make sure you get the right one on the right part of the switch. That's where always taking a photograph comes in handy for reference. Anyways, for this one, single wire in the back, double wire in the front, so you on switch. Slide this back into position. This is where those marks that we put on the floor and the side of the furnace are gonna come in really handy. Just makes it so much easier to line up. At this point, you're going to want to test it before you get too far ahead. I'm going to put the power back on, the breaker, the battery disconnect back on, on, 
we install the fuse. The gas is still off, but I'll set this and dry the heat, crank it up higher than the temperature inside right now. Turn the unit back on. We're going to listen for that click. Good. We've tested it, it's uh, trying to fire up. So I'm gonna go ahead now and put everything back together. Same thing we did, only in reverse. Fit it back into position, put the floor screws in, reattach all of your ductwork, turn the gas back on. Uh, I hope this helped you out. If you run across a similar situation, this is really common to happen in RVs. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Stay with us on the channel. Uh, this channel is normally dedicated to our adventures when we're traveling. We show you where we go, what we eat, and all that. But maintenance is part of the RV life. Unfortunately, things break on these things uh, more often than you'd like. Although I gotta say, we've been pretty lucky with this fifth wheel. We haven't had any major issues. If this is as bad as it gets, then we're doing all right. It's a lot of fun for Tina and I to make these videos. One of our favorite things is when you guys leave us a comment. So go ahead, leave us a comment down below. I look for our next video. Don't forget to check out our Instagram, Tina and Corey. Tina runs that. She does a great job putting together some content on Instagram. And uh, we love that you watch these videos. It really means a lot to us. So thank you. And uh, we'll see you again. Cheers. <laughs>